In this video, we're going to talk about pointers. And pointers are one of the most important topics in C. In fact, it's one of the things that gives C so much power because pointers let us directly address memory. So I'm going to declare a variable num. It'll be an integer and we'll initialize it to six. Now this, this particular variable, if we have this declaration, there's a couple things we can say about it. It has a name, that name is num. It has a value, that value is six. And that means that in the memory location of this variable, the value six is there somehow. It has a type and it's an integer type. It's stored at some memory location. And that location has an address. And that's a label for the location. So all of, all of that's going on behind the scenes when we declare this integer variable. Now I can declare a pointer. And the way I do that is I give the type and then an asterisk. That variable PTR is a pointer to an integer, or you can call it an integer pointer. Now, there's two operations we're going to use when it comes to pointers. And the first is an ampersand. The ampersand is the reference operator that returns the address. The other operation or operator that we're going to be interested in when it comes to pointers is the dereference operator. That returns an alias. If I set pointer equal to the address of num, now pointer holds the address of num. So let's print this out. So num is equal to some number. Its address And the address control sequence is P. And the, its size, we'll print that out as well. So we have the number, the address of the number, and the size of the number. So let's print. Let's go ahead and compile that and run. So we did get a warning here on percent %p, and that's because it expects a void pointer. We'll actually talk about what that is. But the reason is, is percent %p, er, er, it doesn't know what type that is going to be. And we can get rid of this by casting this to a void pointer. It's not a really elegant solution. Void pointers and, and regular pointers in, in some ways can be used interchangeably. And that's something that we'll get into, but we don't really need to care about that. And pointer is set, but not used. That's a warning. We'll use pointer in a minute. So we can ignore both of those for now and just run the code. And you can see number six, its address is this hexadecimal value and the size is four. So now let's print num, or I'm sorry, the pointer and pointer has a pointer value. So we're going to use percent %p. It also has an address. It has a size. And we can dereference it to get an integer since it's an integer pointer. So pointer actually. And I'll dereference it to get that last value.
looks like I did my cast incorrectly there. And again, that's just a cast saying, whatever this is, treat it as though a boy, as it's a void pointer. P is undeclared. Ah, right there. So let's take a look at our output. Now you'll notice num is what we had before. This address is the value held in the PTR variable. It holds an address, that's its type. And the address it's holding, because we did this assignment right here, is the address of num. So we would expect those to be the same. Now, pointers are a variable. So the pointer has an address. That's where this is stored in memory. And you'll notice that that is the same because we did not reference pointer here. That's better. So we basically printed the, the value twice. So its address is this. And you'll notice, notice we have BD0. Here we have BDC. So those are fairly close in memory. They're only separated by a what, 12 bytes or so, I think. And the reason for that is this is a variable. Keep in mind, pointers are variables. They're variables that hold an address. So since it's a variable, it has an address itself. But if we went to that address in memory, this is the value that we would see there. It's eight bytes on my machine. This can vary. It could be anywhere from two to 16, depending on the, the architecture of your computer. And notice when we dereference it, we get six. It is a alias of num. So let's take advantage of that fact. And let's say pointer is equal to 20. And then let's print everything out again. And when we compile, notice after we run, num is equal to 20. And the reason is, is that when we did this assignment, this is equivalent to saying num is equal to 20 because when we dereference pointer, since pointer is pointing to num, dereferencing pointer gives us an alias to num. Okay, so just to be clear on some of that, let's do a couple print statements just so that we can see individually what each of those would be. So if we wanted to look at pointer again. And then if we dereference it, and let's print num just so we remember what that is. And then let's also do the address of num, which is a pointer. So let's uh, do this. So when we compile and run this, that's going to be, that's a warning, but it's a warning we want to take care of. So again, these are the values we saw before. Pointer holds the same value as the address of num. And when we dereference pointer, that's the same value as num. So those are equivalent. So what happens if we take, or if we dereference the address of num? And as you can see, that gives us 20 because this is essentially a pointer to num. So when we dereference it, we get an alias to num, which is just 20. And we can do the same thing with pointer. If we take the address of dereferencing pointer, and since we're referencing, we're going to get a, an address back.
And you can see we get that same address because again, when we dereference pointer and then take the address, we're saying, give me the address of the thing that pointer is an alias to. So it's important that you understand what's going on here. If you really wrap your head around just this, pointers are gonna make a lot more sense. We're gonna spend a lot of time with pointers. There's gonna be a lot of examples. There's five or six more examples we'll do just for this module on pointers. But it's something that you wanna make sure that you have your head around so that you're able to apply this idea once we do more advanced things with pointers. Now, normally we're not gonna do int pointers because there's not really a lot of reason to do that. But here we're going to use ints in some of the initial examples just because it's easier to, to see what's going on. But eventually we'll be using pointers to structures and arrays. That's where a lot of the power really comes in.